Anyway, uh, well, welcome everybody. It's good to see you. Uh, have a couple of just uh, uh, PSAs to go through real quick before we get into our time together. Um, first of all, we've been talking to you about the Kicking the Tires event, um, the, um, the conference that we're going to be having here on October 3rd. Uh, with Greg Finke. Greg Finke is going to be here. I talked to him yesterday. He's all excited about being here in person. Um, so it's going to be both in person and virtual. Um, so, uh, it, you know, he, he's a really good dynamic uh, speaker. So it will be a real, real blessing to have him here. Uh, the conference is nine o'clock to three o'clock. Um, again, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can be here in person, you can do it virtually uh, through Zoom, and we're going to get all that stuff squared away. Um, if you're interested in the conference, the conference is free, doesn't cost anything. Um, you'll see this thing up here called C10. Uh, if you've heard about C10, uh, C10 again is a coalition of congregations in the greater Richmond area that have come together over the last couple of years to encourage and uh, facilitate mission work and service and leadership development and all this kind of stuff. And so uh, C10 is actually sponsoring the event. Uh, they, they are actually paying for the event, uh, which is awesome. So in other words, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, now, with that being said, we do need to have registrations done by the 28th, I believe it is, one week ahead of time, so that we know how to break people out into, into rooms, but also so that we know um, how many lunches to order for people that are going to be on site, that kind of stuff. So if you want to come to the conference, make sure that you're registering on the website. Uh, you'll see at the top of the website, there'll be a, you know, the banners that go by, right, on the top of the website, the headers, and you'll see that graphic. Just click on that graphic and it'll take you to the website, uh, to, to the registration page, okay? Uh, if you have any questions about that, you can uh, talk to Vanya. She's on here today, so you can just kind of send her a, a message in the chat. Um, so anyway, Jet, that's what's going on there, okay? So um, we've been asking this question, what's Jesus up to? Um, how is Jesus moving in your neighborhood, in our neighborhood, in, in uh, the neighborhoods together? So I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things that I've been uh, sharing with you the last couple of weeks. Um, so Steve, I told you last week I was going to borrow Steve's truck uh, and go pick up some stuff for my parents and that kind of stuff. So I did that. And uh, we had... Um, you know, we had a nice time to kind of sit and chat with each other about just what's going on with life. Uh, Steve's kind of a, a, a really funny guy. He's uh, got uh, kids that are also in the neighborhood and grandkids that he loves taking around, that kind of stuff. So they were actually down at Duck for a week. So we got to talk about that and their fishing trips and all that kind of stuff. So that was one, one little thing that we did. Um, and then again, going back and forth. So our gym is... Um, our neighborhood gym uh, is about a third of a mile from my house. So I walk to the gym, I do my four or five miles, and then I come back, right? Um, and so I, I always like talking to people on the way there because it delays me getting there. And it's much better than trying to talk to people when I'm coming back because when I come back, there, there's Jesus' line when uh, when Lazarus comes out of the tomb, right? The people are concerned because, and, and in the King James Version, I love it, in the King James Version, it's, he stinketh, right? <laughs> yeah, that's me when I'm coming back from the gym. So it's, uh, it's probably not a good idea to stop and talk to people, you know, when I'm coming back from the gym. So, yeah, exactly. That's, that's my, so um, it, it's been kind of fun as, as we've been, I've been walking to the gym last week or so to, just talk to some people that are in the neighborhood. Um, about four houses down from me, uh, there's the, uh, uh, well, he's, he's a Methodist, he's a retired Methodist pastor. Um, and his son is uh, the pastor at, uh, hold on, I'll get it, Swift Creek Presbyterian Church. Um, and so we, uh, you know, we, and they're Cardinals fans. So obviously, we get to sit and talk about several different things. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it, it's been fun to just kind of build those relationships and take those relationships a little bit deeper. Um, there's still a couple of people that I'm trying to get to know uh, that are in the neighborhood. So that's uh, something that, that we're working on and trying to get uh, better at. Um, so anyway, 
things that have happened with you guys. Uh, nobody actually sent me any updates this week on the email. If you want to send me an update, please do that at info at redeemerric.org so that I can share that with everybody. Uh, but other things that you guys have been doing this week uh, as you've been uh, seeing what Jesus is up to in your neighborhood. Anything that's been going on? Yeah, Debbie. Oh, yeah? Okay. Right. Okay. 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 Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Good. Yep. So, uh, again, just for the folks that are on Zoom, uh, you know, Debbie's talking about one of her neighbors that's just moved in, a uh, younger couple, a couple of dogs, and that kind of stuff. And just this morning, as she's coming over to church, uh, Kate. Kate is walking around with the dogs and that kind of stuff. And so she just stopped and rolled down the window and said, hey, we haven't had the chance to connect and all that kind of stuff. And uh, talked to him about Redeemer. Um, she's a Methodist. He's Catholic. Uh, and so, you know, Lutheran's perfect, right? Right in the middle. Um, and that kind of stuff. And so uh, she had the opportunity to invite him just to see our live stream. Um, these cards, if you don't have these cards, get one, Right. Uh, I was, um, I was downtown last, about two weeks ago. I had, uh, I went down to Legends to have a quick, quick beer with, uh, the pastor from Trinity on the West End. And we, we just had some stuff we needed to talk about. So we went downtown and we said, I said, have you been to Legends yet? He said, no, I haven't been to Legends yet. I'm like, how can you not be to Legends? Right? So, okay, I'm going to take you to Legends. So we went to Legends and, um, well, my 50th birthday party at Legends, when we had the 50th birthday party down there, uh, our, uh, our kind of hostess was a gal, I can't remember what her name is, um, but she's a black gal, and we ended up talking and that kind of stuff, and I invited her to church, and she said, you know what, I grew up Lutheran. And I said, well, have you been in church lately? And she said, no. So, this is a year and a half ago, I gave her one of these cards. Well, when I went down two weeks ago with Roy, with Pastor Minix, guess who was there? <laughs> and so she wasn't our waitress, but she's walking around the place. It was pretty empty. And I, so I waved her over and she came over and said, yes. And I said, you don't remember me, do you? And she said, no. And I said, well, about a year and a half ago, I had my 50th birthday party here. And she said, bourbon barrel brown. I said, yes, exactly right. <laughs> and she said, and, and so we started laughing. I said, you haven't been to my church yet. And she, she kind of had this blank look. And I said, you don't remember. And she said, no. And I said, well, I'm a Lutheran pastor. And you told me you grew up Lutheran. And she said, yeah, now I remember. And so I gave her one of these cards again. If you don't have one of these cards, you need to have one. You need to have 10 with you, right, to pass around to people. Because on the back, it's got the website. And it's also got our service times. And you can say you can come in person or you can live stream. Just jump on the website, okay? Uh, again, just a great way to introduce people to Redeemer. Other things, yeah. Um, I did send an email, by the way. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know if it's not for friends, but they can just show up on the 
Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Sure. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So Ellie's just talking about somebody that uh, that's just moved into uh, you know a couple of houses up from her. Um, there's somebody that's Duhan has been, lived there for a while, and then. Yeah, and then uh, there was a moving van there a couple of days ago, and, you know, she just had the opportunity to go up and uh, say hello and take some, uh, take some goodies and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so I did my internship at Woodbury Lutheran Church in Woodbury, Minnesota, under a guy whose name was Paul Fotenauer. He was the senior pastor there. He was the founding pastor of Woodbury Lutheran Church, and he built the thing from a handful of people to over 3,000 members during his entire, he spent his entire ministry at Woodbury Lutheran Church. Uh, interesting, fascinating guy. Completely cut from a different cloth as a lot of different people that I've seen in my life. Um, how Paul built the church was he chased moving vans. And anytime he saw a moving van come into, you know, Woodbury is a bedroom community of St. Paul, and so as people were moving from St. Paul to Woodbury, Paul would see the moving van come in and he would chase the moving van and he would stand there and help them unload and move furniture and talk to them about, and he would say, okay, well, I'm the pastor of Woodbury Lutheran Church. I'll see you there on Sunday. Now, Minnesota is a different place, right? It's, it's kind of like living in the deep South where, um, you know, the two questions people ask is where are you going to live and what church are you going to go to or what synagogue you're going to Minnesota is just that way, right? Everybody go, everybody's Lutheran or Catholic, right? And so, you know, it's, a, it's, a, but the point is that's how he built that church was just chasing moving bands. And then when he saw one, he'd be like, all right, I'm going to go help him move in and tell him about Woodbury. And he was a very effective guy. Anyway, what else? Other stories. What else is going on in your neighborhood? What's Jesus up to? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yep. For such a time as this, right? Um, and again, just for people on Zoom, 
uh, again, just a neighbor with some real challenges, right? With family challenges and that kind of stuff. And, and just that, taking the opportunity intentionally, deliberately, you know, while you're reading this book to go over and just say, hey, just wanted to connect with you and see how you're doing, right? Um, and share your story and so, something so simple as, you know, the only way I got through that was through my faith in God, right? I mean, that's a powerful thing. And then to connect on that deeper level, right? Good, 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 good. So um, again, if you have other stories that you're experiencing in your neighborhood where you see Jesus doing some stuff, again, just send them in to me. Let me know. Info at RedeemerRIC.org, and I'll share those with you next week. Um, last week, I'm just going to go back real fast. Sorry, Vanya, I'm not, I'm not doing this there. Last week, we talked about these five practices, uh, seeking the kingdom, hearing from Jesus, talking with people, doing good ministering through prayer. Again, I'm not going to go over these, but these are the things that we talked about last week. Um, talking with people, doing good, ministering through prayer. Again, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about. So let me share some statistics with you. Uh, a Cigna report on loneliness in America that came out last January, I think the timing of this report is really interesting, said that 47% of Americans today report feeling alone sometimes or always. I wonder if they took this study after a pandemic or while we're still in a pandemic, what the, uh, what the results would be. 27% of Americans feel there is no one who understands them fully. 53% have no one to talk to, no meaningful personal relationship. 30% know none of their neighbors. And it's very interesting that uh, the report says that 18 to 22 year olds are the most lonely Americans of them all. And you would think with something like social media that that might change that, but actually the study says no, actually social media doesn't help at all. Actually social media makes it worse. Um, it, one of the findings is that um, if you're a scroller, you pull up your Facebook and you just scroll down and look at stuff, it actually makes your loneliness worse. However, if you are using social media to actually engage people on a Facebook group or whatever, right, and you're actually engaging pe with people, that actually helps your loneliness. Um, um, George Barna has this saying uh, that Amer Americans are the loneliest people on the face of the planet. That's true in our neighborhoods, right? What do you think about this? How do these statistics make you feel? Troubled. Yeah. The third one's almost unbelievable. 53% have nobody to talk to? Yeah. Know that they have no meaningful personal relationships. Huh? Yeah, it's shocking, isn't it? Uh, again, this is the situation in our neighborhoods. Um, I, again, I, I wonder, um, you know, over the last six months, as activities and sports and that kind of stuff have really been taken away from us, right? Most, a lot of that stuff has just been completely shut down. I wonder if they would retake this survey, what it would show today. I bet you the numbers are much worse. Okay. This is what our neighbors are going through. So, um, Greg talks about this thing called neighboring. Uh, he defines it this way on page 136. Neighboring is defined as creating or taking advantage of existing opportunities which foster community and friendship between the neighbors where we live, work, play, or go to school. Neighboring begins the process of awakening community in a neighborhood and friendships between neighbors. It, neighboring is about doing something intentionally and deliberately. It's about saying, you know what, we, we've got this community that we live in. And so we are going to create opportunities or we're going to take advantage of existing opportunities to build the relationships within this community. And there's lots of different ways to do it. There's lots of different thoughts about how to do it. 
But again, it, it takes some intentionality. It takes some deliberate thought. It takes some, uh, some sitting down with your spouse and saying, hey, let's do something and include our neighbors. Okay. Um, oh, another, uh, another interesting uh, data point that I put on the notes here. A report published in International Psychogeriatrics uh, in December of 2018 reported that three out of four Americans report moderate to high level of loneliness, 75%. have moderate to high levels of loneliness, okay? So uh, again, that's just another data point. Um, so really what, what Greg is talking about with this chapter and with these couple of chapters is starting to foster this thing of neighboring, okay? Uh, and he uses this, uh, this kind of, uh, you know, mathematical formula, if you will, uh, to talk about how do we do this? How do we develop this sense of neighboring? First is, he talks about unhurried time. Um, again, I think one of the things that has happened over the last six months is we have slowed down quite a bit, right? Again, the sports activities, the school activities, all of the things that we tend to busy ourselves with, well, a lot of that stuff has just gone away. And so now we have this sense of unhurried time. We don't have to rush off to the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Debbie's just saying it. You know, grandparents. One of the blessings of being a grandparent is um, not having as much as many things to just run, rush off to. Um, so you kind of have this ability to slow down a little bit and enjoy unhurried time to which of course i want to say debbie i've got some things for you to do <laughs> uh, so unhurried time is important you, you ha actually i have to do this just because one of the weaknesses i have um, is that i will fill my time i have to actually budget some time in my calendar to go do things, right? Um, Friday afternoons, I budget that I'm out of the office at 12 o'clock so that I can go hang out with people. Like go, you know, in my neighborhood, go find some people to hang out with or, you know, go spend some time walking to the gym, just stopping and spending time with people, that kind of stuff, right? Um, I have to actually budget. I, I know that about myself. I have to budget that in my own calendar because otherwise I won't do it. I have to budget unhurried time. I know that sounds like an oxymoron. Uh, the proximity is the next thing, okay? So that you're actually geographically, physically close to somebody, okay? Um, so you, it, proximity is, is basically your neighbor, right? And, and again, that can be in your neighborhood, that can be uh, in your workplace, your school, your family, wherever, right? When you have a closeness, to somebody. Um, so you have unhurried time, you have somebody that's next to you that is, pro is proximal to you, and then you spend time with that person, right? You do an activity. And Greg talks a lot about food, right? So, you know, the brownies, good to go, you know, that kind of stuff. Find a way to and have unhurried time with somebody who lives next close to you and include food with it. And he says, that will guarantee that conversations happen, okay? So what's today? Today's Sunday. Does anybody know what's going on this afternoon? Okay, other than a good day to make cookies. What's going on this afternoon? Somebody. 
Football? Yeah, football starts, right? Okay. Um, so, you know, yesterday, again, when I went to the gym, the, there's all kinds of college football on. So, and I know that, you know, some of us think that that's just a great time to be, sit around and be a couch potato for a while. It's also a great time to invite somebody over and say, hey, we're going to have a cookout. You know, come over. Bring some chili with you. Okay? Um, and I guarantee you will have conversation. Okay? I guarantee it. Um, and then what happens is, Greg says that over time, as you do this over time, it's going to result in a friendship. Now, I will say this, uh, because of the nature of the world that we live in today, and particularly the nature of where we at, it's, you know, it's September 13th, um, that as you get into conversation, these conversations can go lots of different ways, right? They can go lots of different ways, you know, Start with sports, it can go lots of different ways, but then you can get into what's going on in the neighborhood, what's going on in our country, what's going on with politics, what's going on with uh, masking and social distancing and all those kinds of things, right? Um, and it may go all kinds of different ways that you don't agree with, and that's okay. The trick with all of this is to figure out how to do this and if somebody is on the other side of an issue or of a thing than you are, to not build fences because of that issue, to not build walls because of that issue, but to listen, to hear somebody share stories, to ask questions, and then, as we talked about, to, start to, uh, to just start to build that relationship even when you disagree with somebody, or even if that neighbor drives you nuts, okay? Uh, we're talking about boundaries on Sunday morning, right? Even, that nature, even if that neighbor is horrible with boundaries, okay? The point is, how do we love each other, and how do we love somebody in the name of Jesus? Okay? That's tough. I know it is. It's really tough. Okay? The point is that as we are doing this, we are to show the love of Jesus Christ to somebody. All right? So, um, so here's the question that I want us to struggle with. Who is God placing on your heart? As you think about your neighborhood, your workplace, your school, wherever. Wherever you are, is there somebody that God has been placed on your heart and you think that he's just nudging you to start to build a relationship with that person? And if that, and if, whoever that person is, let me put it that way. How can you intentionally, deliberately this week start to look at that formula and say, okay, how do I start to do this, right? How do I set aside some unhurried time to go to a neighbor and to just say, I've been thinking about you. So I'll check in. How you doing? Um, to, to build that proximity, to draw close to somebody. Um, you know, to ask them over for a meal or say, hey, can, you want to go out to coffee? Or bring food, bring cookies. Yes, I know, bring cookies. Um, by the way, I forgot to check the time when you mentioned that. When, when was the... <laughs> um, so Greg shares a couple of stories in, in his book. He shares one story about when they just moved to Houston and moved into this cul-de-sac, moved into this neighborhood, and he noticed that people do in this neighborhood what a lot of other people do in the neighborhood, right? They go in... Uh, people come home at the end of the day, they go in their house, they close the door, and you don't see them, right? And so Greg and his wife made the decision that they're going to uh, set up a barbecue. 
And so they invited their friends over for a barbecue and they were thinking, well, maybe we'll get, you know, 30 or 40 people. They got 85 people uh, coming over and, and he said it was great. I mean, we, you know, we had enough food, so that worked out well. Uh, but it started all kinds of conversations and relationships that were just really, really awesome. Okay. Um, again, I think now's a great time to do this. So, all right. So I got to tell on my dad a little bit. So, um, so uh, this is a couple of months ago. Diane was cooking out. She, she is the griller. Um, I grilled once and it was awful. So she says, you're not doing this anymore. Great. So she's the griller. So uh, a couple of months ago, or yeah, it's probably a couple of months ago now. She was on the back deck. She was grilling away and our Weber grill literally went up in flames. Okay. And it went, it, it burned all of the plastic stuff inside. Normally Weber's are awesome. Uh, we've actually replaced all of the innards of that grill uh, once already, you just say, "Hey Weber, I need this stuff," and they send it to you. No problem. But this, the inner, all of the plastic stuff, the controls, the plastic controls are completely fried. Right, they're melted. So that's not going to happen. Well, I didn't have eight hundred bucks to go buy a new grill, especially at the seven hundred dollars I just spent on the brakes. Um, so I, we just said, "Well, we're just going to have to wait a little while to get a new grill." So, my dad being my dad said, you know, we were talking about grills and Diane was explaining that we'd burn out the grill. He said, well, you can just have my grill. Okay. So last Sunday I was, I went over and with Steve's truck to get the grill for my dad. Well, meanwhile, my dad has gone out and gotten a smoker, which was the real point of the whole thing, right? <laughs> he wanted to go get a smoker, but he had a grill already. And so, well, I'll give the grill to Matt and Diane. That's perfect. So I can go get my smoker. So he got a smoker. Okay. Now you understand how my dad works. So anyway, we got a smoker. He got a smoker. We didn't get the smoker. Anyway, he got a smoker. So we had to help, uh, Stephen and I help him put the smoker together. And I said, dad, you realize that first of all, you, you can't, put this thing in your garage, right? And you can't put it out in the back of the cottage. You're going to have to do it in the driveway, right? Okay. All right. That's no problem. I said, you realize what's going to happen. You're going to get this thing up and running and the entire neighborhood is going to come out. Right. And they're going to want to have a party, right? And, and you also have to understand that my daddy in the garage has the wine that he makes, and he also has the TR3 that he has. So everybody's going to come over for, you know, for, the, for the, the ribs that he's making on the smoker and the wine that he's going to bring out and talk about the TR3. So anyway, that's just going to be, you know, these are, this is the art of neighboring. My dad is going to start the art of neighboring in Brandon Woods without even realizing it, Okay. Who's God placed on your heart? Wait. And is there a way that you can intentionally and deliberately start to put this formula into place? Uh, there's a couple other stories that Greg shares as well um, in the book about his experiences. Uh, there's the experience that uh, his friend has who lives in the neighborhood with the drug dealer. Okay. Um, and I, again, I, I, I didn't read it in depth enough to really understand, but it basically started out by the, this guy walking, you know, driving by and waving to the guy who was selling drugs out of his house. Right. And the guy would wave back. Who knows that a drug dealer would actually wave back. Right. And then all of a sudden they started building a relationship and started inviting the drug dealer over to their house and all this kind of stuff. And all of a sudden the drug dealer's not a drug dealer anymore. The drug dealer's my neighbor. In John chapter 10, the question is asked to Jesus, who is my neighbor, right? And he tells the story of the Good Samaritan. 
And for us, even though we don't talk about it in these terms, for us, sometimes there are the untouchable people in our lives that we think are beyond the grace of God. May it never be. The person who is divorced or the person that has struggled with alcoholism or drug abuse or the person that has struggled with whatever in our life, and we kind of turn our noses up at them, and we are just like the lawyer and the Levite and the priest who see the man beaten by the side of the road and we walk by the other side because we're so busy, we're so whatever. And Jesus calls us to love the one who's untouchable in our own life. Who's God putting on your heart? <clears throat> so I want to spend a couple of minutes on this. Um, because in, uh, what is it, chapter 18 of the book, it, it, he has like, yeah, 30 or 40 different instances of how to neighbor. Um, this is on page 149 and to 151. It's got all kinds of great ideas that work in a non-pandemic world, Right? where social distancing is a thing and all that kind of stuff. And, and so this may take a little creativity on our part. Or maybe it, 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 the expectation comes, hey, we're gonna have a party with 30 people in our house, so we're gonna have just a friend over and a neighbor over, right? And a couple over. And we'll maintain so, social distancing and maybe we'll just sit out on our driveway and we'll, you know, we'll maintain social distancing and we'll wear masks until we eat or whatever, right? I mean, whatever. It's going to look different. It's going to feel different. It's, it's not going to be like what he, maybe what he says in the book. But I think there are other creative, innovative ways that we can neighbor during a pandemic, right? So anyway, I just want to throw that your way. Other thoughts about how to do this. Uh, maybe just, I'm not the most creative person in the world. Uh, I, you know, some of you guys are really, really creative about this kind of stuff. Other thoughts about how maybe, hey, this is how we could do this. Something real simple. Yeah, Beth. Yep. Yep. Cool. Cool. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> I'm really Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. 
Good. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so Beth says a couple of things. Again, for those of you on Zoom, Beth has talked to us about her neighbors on both sides. Uh, and they're on both sides of political, social issues. Um, and so Beth kind of reached out. But she, I think this is a really important thing with regard to this, right? You, I know where I stand. You know where you stand on this stuff. One of the things Paul tells us about is do not use your freedom as a stumbling block to other people, right? So use your freedom with this to serve others, right? And, um, you know, 1 Corinthians talks about that a ton. Um, and so Beth asks the question, you know, where do you stand with this? Because I want to do what makes you feel comfortable. Perfect. Right? Um, if it's wearing a mask, I'll wear a mask for this. If it's wearing a mask, I'll wear a mask for the sake of the gospel. That's what Paul would say. If it's not wearing a mask, I won't wear a mask for the sake of the gospel. In other words, this is not the issue. The gospel is the issue. And let's figure out every way we can to serve the gospel. Okay, cool. Very cool, Beth. Yeah, Jamie. Another idea. Sure. And they said, hey, my yard, uh, winter's coming. How about I'm going to have the children park my truck in the driveway, swing over a foot, and then to the uh, whatever. And uh, I think we went to the whole neighborhood and moved to the very old section of the south side. Uh, south side. Mm -hmm. Sure. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. So Jamie's telling the story about Kim and Chris Nestor uh, in their house. They, they, they basically last winter, a couple winters ago, said, um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to prep chili, come for chili, but bring a coat with you that you can donate to give away, right? Um, and so people did. People came. They came for chili. They brought coats uh, to donate to, you know, newer or, or gently used coats, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and they ran out of chili, and they had a lot of coats. So, uh, again, yeah, I think uniting people around a service activity, uh, again, that's a powerful thing. People love to serve. People love to, uh, uh, to serve people in need. Uh, again, that's a great thing to do, right? Um, so, yeah, excellent. Uh, you know. Yeah, I'll give you a service opportunity, right? Uh, you know, our church is giving away bags of food every week, right? And, um, you know, Becky has done a great job building a network of community resources, including UCROPS and, and all kinds of folks that, that are helping out with that so that it's not just Redeemer people providing the food. It's a, it's a lot of people that are contributing. But boy, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, we said, hey, come on over for chili and bring two can items that we're going to donate to our church. Or, hey, come on over for chili, and if you've got some gently used clothing that you'd like to give away, we're going to start doing a clothes bank as well uh, to give clothing away to needy people in our community as well, right? So those are great opportunities. Uh, come for food. Do a service, hang out, and start conversation. See what happens. Okay? So anyway, the point is there's lots of creative, innovative ways that we can do this, and we can spend all kinds of different time thinking about these things. If you guys on Zoom have ideas that you want to share uh, that you think God is, is giving you this idea and say, hey, man, we should do this, um, go ahead and send them in, right? Info at RedeemerRIC.org. Okay? Yeah, Becky.
then obviously, how do we look for something to do? Yep. We don't, we don't know what to do we're going to do. Um, one of the things that actually my daughter and I were talking about was you can decorate pumpkins socially distance, right? Sure. So just inviting a few of her friends over and providing some pumpkins and just sitting around and having pumpkins together. Yeah. Like, I mean, people are in the mood to do things. People want to spend them in time. Right. We're done with unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, even if you don't have kids, just doing something like that, and maybe it sounds so silly. Yep. Yeah, and inviting some kids, some grandkids over and say, hey, we're going to be carving pumpkins. You know, again, it doesn't have to be 50 people. It can just be a couple, right? And, and just say, hey, come on over and let's carve pumpkins together. We'll do it on the back deck or on the driveway or whatever. And, yeah, just come on over. Okay? Yeah. Right now. Last one. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Brenda invited some neighbors, new neighbors over to watch meteor showers. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I've got the... Uh, um, the app for the International Space Station on my phone. So I get texts when it's about to come over, come overhead. Uh, it's pretty cool. You go outside and you say, oh, there it is. And it's like, it, I mean, there it is, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's pretty cool. But yeah, invite your neighbors over and say, hey, for four minutes, we can watch the Space Center. Yeah, 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 good. All right. So um, again, next week we'll come back. Uh, we'll share some more stories about how it's going and see how God's uh, doing things, okay? Uh, remember this, unhurried time. Proximity, activity, food leads to conversation over time that's going to become friendship. And may God create that with us. Okay, thanks guys. Let's pray, shall we? Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunities that you give to us uh, to share our stories uh, we know that you are moving and that you are doing things in our communities. You are doing things in our neighborhoods. You are doing things with our family and friends. And Lord, we thank you for placing us where we are for the specific purpose of growing your kingdom, for the specific purpose of building relationships and helping people to uh, grow in their faith and grow in their relationship with you and with us. Lord, we ask that you would help us to do that. We ask that you would help us to use the tools that you have given to us uh, not to get caught up in uh, social or political or trappings, but to use everything at our disposal in service of the gospel. Uh, may that be true of each one of us. In this week, Lord, bless us as we go about our week, as we um, go to become your missionaries and uh, use the time that you give to us to speak and to act and to love in the name of Jesus. So again, we thank you for this time. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you later.